I encourage anyone to grab a drink because I have one for this episode. It may it may take a couple three four to get through this, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna get through it. You know, we felt a little more even killed this game. The roster was a little more even, the talent level, and that's why there was a lot of hopes and expectations going into this past week's game that you know we we didn't live up to. Got to call a spade a spade. We did not live up to it. It's unfortunate because I've been in this kid's shoes. I expected a lot out of him. I said it when we were talking to Joshua. I was like, Drew's got to make three or four plays he hasn't made and keep playing the way he's been playing. And then Kyle McCord's got to play in a manner that I don't think he's played all year. And Kyle did it. And Drew not only didn't make the three plays, but he didn't play anything like he played all year. I'm not blame. I wouldn't blame Drew. Like, that's his first test at the shoe. I'm saying that we know what the expectations are to be like and things like that. But it's it's about what's around him. It's about what's what positions they're putting him in for him to you know what I'm saying showcase what it is that he can do to lead them over an Ohio State team. Quarterback sneak right side, touchdown and stay Yo guys, we got the merch. We have hats, shirts, hoodies, we got it all. Make sure you hit the link in the description, check it out. You guys keep buying the merch, it allows us to produce this pod and continuing to bring you guys dope content. So go check it out, make sure you tag us at State Media PSU. And when you get yours, make sure you shout us out, we'll give you a shout out online. Check it out, I'm looking forward to the support and we appreciate you guys as always. Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Pocket. Um, I encourage anyone to grab a drink because I have one for this episode. It may, it may take a couple, three, four to get through this, but, uh, we're going to, we're going to get through it. But on a brighter note, um, we got our guy, number five, Deshaun Hamilton joining us for the entire episode. We're taking, we're taking, we're riding this wave like we did with Sickles. Uh, I think there'll be some funny stories. I think there'll be some good points brought up by, by my man, Pots and Pans over here. Um, those of you who don't know, Deshaun Hamilton, all-time uh, leading receiver in receptions in Penn State history, um, was one of my favorite teammates of all time. Uh, I think you had, what, 15 receptions against Ohio State in 14? That was mm, got to yeah, be. Man. Great wide, that's a great wide out game, double overtime game. Yeah, yeah, 15 or 16. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, big one, was one of my favorite guys. So, uh, Ham, Welcome, welcome, dude. Uh, I know B and I were really stoked to get you on. What's what's been popping, dude? What's what's up? What's up with life right now? Hag B, appreciate y'all letting me join the podcast, the hottest podcast on the streets right now. At least that's what the word is. But um, but nah, man, hanging out, still getting to it. Um, for all the Penn State followers out there, I have been I've been hurt the last two years, two seasons, and then now I'm back finally healthy, working my way back in the league, but. Um, obviously, still been following along with Penn State. Still been following along with how the guys been progressing over the years and things like that ever since I left. But um, but yeah, no complaints on my end. It was great, good seeing y'all. It was good seeing BSRB a couple weeks ago. He pulled up on me down here in Florida. Had a great time. But yeah, but no complaints on my end. Happy to see you healthy again, bro. Yeah, yeah man, feels great. Feels good. Been a long time, but you know, there's a lot of work, a lot of hard work got into it. But nah, appreciate that. Appreciate that a lot. No doubt. I'm excited, excited to see you get back out there. And I, I know for you, you know, it starts with the work, you know, putting the work in. I know you don't stop nonstop. Shoot, me and uh, some of the guys, me and Malik were talking about, we're not sure if anyone loves a game more than you do. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's just a testament to you. I know we're gonna, we were supposed to, you know, tell some stories. We'll get there. But I kind of want to get right into it because you did have a monumental game against the Buckeyes a couple of years ago. Can you, like, tell us one of your highlights of that game? Was it yeah, a- it was back, that was back in my heyday. Um, but, yeah, that game, yeah, like Hack was saying, that was a double overtime game back on the whiteout. I don't know what year. I think it was 2015. 14. 14. 14. 14. Yeah, 2014. But, yeah, bro. Now, that game was crazy. We, we again, we were, like – that was the year we were, I think it was the first or second year we were like hit hard with the sanctions and shit like that. So that game was supposed to be like a whole lopsided, unfair David and Goliath battle and shit like that. But, um, but nah, I think like even leading up to that week, I remember at least specifically like me, Hack, Gino, y'all on the defense, we were just, you know what I'm saying? Like we were actually extremely excited for that, 
think that was my first whiteout I got to play in. Actually, and then, yeah, yeah, that was my first whiteout I ever got to play in, bro. And so I was so hyped that entire week. So all I remember, at least throughout that game, throughout that entire week, we just going back and forth. Like we would score, they would score, we wouldn't score, they wouldn't score. Defense putting us in, in great position, but then they had who they had back then? They had Bosa back then. Yeah, a lot um, of guys. Yeah, 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 Bosa, Dan <laughs> Lee had um, Ron Bell, Ron Bell, Bell, Ron Bell. Like, yeah. Josh Perry. Right. Yeah, <laughs> Perry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had Josh Perry. They had all kinds of dudes on that D line. Like they had a uh, big, big ass D line, and I forget who. They, any of it, anyways. But yeah. So I remember, bro, like just every possession, I just remember like it was like do or die. Then what do I remember specifically? I remember specifically, I remember one play, bro. Heck, I, heck, I know you remember this play. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what the play was called. It was when I was supposed to have a basic. I don't know what Gino was supposed to have I was, because we were stacked. We were stacked on the left. And um, I don't know what Gino was supposed to have, but Gino ran a basic too. <laughs> And it was in it was a, it was in double overtime, <clears throat> and I was the one I wasn't I was at least the shoulder rider. Gino was like really probably two or three yards right in front of me. You threw it to me, and then that put us in field goal position. I think to to tie with the field goal for us to go to double overtime. But nah, the, no offense, Hack. But the one thing I do remember is, bro, obviously how the game ended. Remember how the game ended? Yeah. Yeah, my knee does and my hip does too. Still. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> But that was, I guess, that was like one way to at least, um, at least put us down, though. Because I think if, bro, if we at least would have scored on, I think we would have took it down at least that year for sure. If we would have at least scored on that one play, um, where Godwin had like a circus in the back of the end zone, and then I mean they had they had the questionable interception. Was that the one? Was that the, did they did they block a punt on us that week? I mean that that game too. Or I don't like? think so. There was a questionable interception, I mean, which was, I will stand was, on. Then there was also so. there was also two delay of games that weren't called mm. on the field goals. I mean it was like zero one one thousand two one thousand. Then they snapped it, no flags, and it were like forty seven yard field goals. Mm. So you know you're talking like does it make a difference? Does it not? I don't know, but. Um, I will say this, though, because I think this segues us right into, like, this game here. When I needed a play as the quarterback, I knew exactly who was going to win that entire game, and it was number five. And you, you you highlighted one of them, but there was multiple ones. I mean, you, I kind of left you out to dry on a slant on, like, a third down. You went up and got it, got it, knife, got some extra yards, like – there was a lot of plays you made throughout that game that kept us on schedule. And like I said, you had, I think, damn near 15 receptions that game. Mm-hmm. Which was, which was, yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Dude, one, one, I remember from that game, it takes me to uh, Theo Johnson, laid out, uh, laid out Ohio State player this past week. It kind of went unsung because the play, I think, was a negative rush yard, but he <laughs> smacked him on a tight end, kind of bringing it back across. I got lit up by Zeke. <laughs> oh, my. By Zeke for <laughs> Elliott. <laughs> I tell you, I timed up this blitz off the edge like perfectly. I had the snap count. By the time the ball left the ground, I was a foot in the backfield. And Zeke came across the quarterback. I thought he didn't see me. I thought I had a clean shot to – who was the quarterback? Great to bear, maybe. Yeah. And he came across and <laughs> to clean me out the picture. I tried to get up so fast, but he kept blocking me. Like, I, felt yeah. like, I, felt, I kind of felt like embarrassed a little bit. I, mean, I remember that play, but I never. I got my lick back though. Got my lick back. Yeah, my first sack. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you did. Was that was that the game too? B, I'm, I'm coming at the defense now from back then. Was that the game when JT had like I don't know, like nine, ten straight completions in the game, or am I thinking of a different year? That might have been 2017 after I left. <laughs> yeah. JT Barrett always he played. He was he was a dog. Um, he definitely had a lot of good games against us. I can't lie, mm-hmm. yeah. but that they were definitely stacked that year. Definitely stacked, which is why I think we kind of, you know, we felt a little more even killed this game. The rosters were a little more even. The talent level were was a little bit better matched for this season, and that's why there was a lot of hopes and expectations going into this past week's game that you know we we didn't live up to. Got to call a spade a spade. We did not live up to it. And they executed. In my opinion, they executed. We didn't. There's a lot to get into, which we will. But that's kind of the bottom line for me. And I know Hack, Deshaun, yeah. has got a lot of points to make. 
And where you guys want to take it? You want to take it at offense first? Yeah, let's let, let's go to offense. And I kind of want to frame this up as like a triangle, a reverse triangle, however you want to look at it. I'm going to start at the skinny part, <clears throat> work our way broader here, right? And uh, it's unfortunate because I've been in this kid's shoes, uh, both on the in the valleys and on the peaks. Um, but I do have to call a spade a spade, and and Drew, man. It was a shame. I just – I expected a lot out of him. I said it when we were talking to Joshua. I was like, "What? Drew's got to make three or four plays he hasn't made and keep playing the way he's been playing. And then Kyle McCord's got to play in a manner that I don't think he's played all year. And Kyle did it, and Drew not only didn't make the three plays, but he didn't play anything like he played all year from an efficiency standpoint. Um, and that's my first point. Like, it, it – when it comes down to orchestrating and I think that there's some other things that we're going to get into that may have magnified that and put him in situations that, that weren't quite advantageous for him. Um, when there were plays to be made, he didn't make them. Um, and that's just part of the position and, and, and plugging along and figuring it out. And unfortunately it happened on prime time in his home state against the biggest opponent that we've had to date and is going to have ultimately playoff and championship ramifications. So what do you guys evaluate about Drew? Cause I, like I said, I got, I got all kinds of stuff, but I'm gonna let you guys talk and I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll play, I'll play, I'll play Robin to y'all's Batman here. I'll, uh, I'll kick it off just cause I always want to start with love, even though it kind of had a little bit of hate into it, but I mean, he owned up to it right after the game oh, yeah, sure. in a press conference, which I loved. I mean, he didn't shy about, you know, grading himself off the performance, which I think is big. And uh, shoot, it's only the seventh start. But as you said, it's big shoes to fill at that role at Penn State. And that position, obviously, across the country, no matter where you are. And I think, I mean, like you said, he did not play his best game. The offense in general did not play their best game. And as I said, you know, I'm not going to get into the weeds of play-by-play. I know everyone's doing that. Oh, he should have threw here. They should have done this, should have done that. Obviously, hindsight is always 2020. I just think as a whole, we didn't execute. We didn't hit the marks that we needed to, quarterback included. And I think that's the, that's the, the frustrating part as an alumni, former player uh, of this team, is that you know the talent's there. You know the capability is there. And we talk about depth and all that. It doesn't matter because we just talked about 2014. We didn't have none of that. All these years, yeah. we didn't have any of that, per se. And we still kind of found a way to actually ultimately didn't win, so it doesn't matter. But kind of everyone's saying they left a lot of opportunities out there. And I think that's the part that eats them away, eats us away as fans, because it wasn't 2013 where we just got smacked up by the all around number one team in the country. It was it was a boxing match and we just didn't we didn't we left a lot we of didn't help ourselves at all. At all. I mean it it was a boxing match because that was two of the best defenses in the country playing. I mean that's why it was a boxing match. Right. But like offensively we just look anemic man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, I say um, at least first to piggyback off what Bebo was saying it wasn't even a matter of um, again like I, I can appreciate that Drew was uh, or at least was taking accountability and he was realistic with himself but um, it's, what what year is Drew? What year is he? Sophomore. Sophomore? Sophomore. Um, I, at least during the game I know one of the announcers they made a great point they were talking about um, that the game, at least Ohio State defense made Drew turn into like a true drop back passer where now you got to pick defenses apart. Now you got to know where you're going with the rock before you even snapping the ball kind of thing. So um, I think that also was a big difference maker in the game because then now not only is the onus on Drew to begin with, like obviously to know where to go with the ball, but now you got to have the guys that are able to like hack was telling like hack was saying to, to begin with that you know you can go to with the ball when you need a play when you need to get the mood to change you need a first down you need to keep the momentum you need to sustain the the 
life of the drive, or you need to be able just to sustain a whole drive, taking time off the clock, give your defensive break, things like that. So I think, um, again, um, I'm just ping-ponging off of what both of you are saying because of the fact that the talent wasn't, you know what I'm saying, the talent margin wasn't as vast as it had, as it had been in the, in the past years, even in the last all-time history of Ohio State and Penn State. It's more so now um, the execution. It's now more so of, of, like, what little things is it here that guys are doing? What little things is it that Ohio State is doing in comparison? Even that's, like, game time adjustments, whether that's, like, one-on-one matchups, whether that's, um, that's like, adjusting, or even within those, playing the game within the game. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because football is just all a chess match within itself. So, um, and then with two pro caliber teams Penn State pumps out pro skill players every year Ohio State pumps out pro skill players every year at this point it was like seven on seven at that point like at least from watching the game we didn't really try to run the ball as much I don't know what happened to Singleton um, or I, I guess Penn State likes Allen a lot more or at least likes him more than Singleton at specific times but you know they didn't continue with the run they didn't they barely wanted to run the ball on third down until you know um Maybe they seen some adjustment to make, but it might have been a little too late to make that adjustment, of course. But um, but again, like I said, it's just seven on seven out there. And then that now goes again to the quarterback, to the receivers, protection, of course. But Ohio State's D-line isn't there big and bad and also also mighty D-line as it had been in the past. Penn State's offensive lineman is very, very stout, very strong. I, I can like actually appreciate the play of a lot of their old linemen from the I'm season. I'm not on that point. I'm not sure if we exactly won that battle, even though on paper, you know, a well, lot may say. But also to that hack, point, hack, hack, what, how many sacks? Hack, how many sacks you took when we played, and and how many sacks did Drew have? Oh, no, I don't. I don't even know. But it was, <laughs> let's not. Let's not. That hatchet's buried, bro. Let's not. Let's not talk about that. But no, no. One but, more point. Um, one more point, and then I know okay. he's going to take us home. Like you said. Um, Finding those guys to go to, and heck, I know you'll you'll hit on this. Yeah, Cord had those guys. I'll take. I'll put myself out there. I I didn't um, pencil uh, Stover as a kind of a guy guy at tight end. He made a big play. He can play. He made some plays, and I kind of thought he was just you know a tight end, good hands, can move, but he's he's yeah. pretty dang good. I'll take credit for that. And then obviously they had Marvin Harrison, which does the two guys when he needed to. That's what we went to. Yeah, I mean, it was they were good blankets, but I think I think Deshaun, I thought you made some really good points there, and and I think that this this will kind of put the button in it, right? Like I think from a running game standpoint, Nick still averaged five point three yards a carry this past week. Like, yeah, the the carries were down or whatever. We also only ran like sixty eight plays on offense. We threw forty two of them. So you know, like you know what I mean? There's there's only there's only so much left there. I thought on third down, I, initially watching it, I thought we were in some pretty efficient third and mediums and third and fourth, but we did have a handful of third and longs penalties negative yards plays that kind of screwed us up and kept us off schedule but to me what it came down to is is like ohio state knew that they needed to figure out ways how to get guys like 18 and eight in football and they were able to do that as they figured out penn state's defense like jim Knowles, when he knew it was short he went a little kind of like last year old school where he he gave us some zero looks on third and short and forced drew to make plays he didn't make them uh receivers didn't separate whatever it was on on several occasions but i think offensively when you look at what we did like our two most creative plays in terms of trying to take shots we tried to get keandre to throw two passes like when you can run the football as efficiently as we have, and like whether you whether whether it's explosive or not, it doesn't matter. Five yards is still five yards, and the second level is thinking about that. Yeah. So, the game within the game, Deshaun, like you would think that our vertical passing game would have been a little more creative off of our bigger, harder like run actions to try to affect that second level, get some eyes in the backfield, and help our guys create separation. When you watch our vertical passing game, it was just straight drop back, like running a crosser with a go or like Mm -hmm. a post with an over, like real elementary stuff. And there was no real window dressing to it to affect anybody. And we haven't shown the ability to win consistently in those situations. So I thought that was really interesting. And I thought that's a point that is a learning point for us, especially on first and second down, like we know we're a run heavy team. Well, if we want to create shots in run heavy situations, 
let's work on our our big play actions and getting guys a chance to move around and and do things. I thought they highlighted the rece- the the tight ends over the middle of the field, but Drew, I don't think he sees it that well, honestly. Multiple times throughout the game, we had separation over the middle of the field, especially with tight ends or on outbreakers against safeties, and he just didn't take it, man. And I think that goes back to what you were saying. Like, when we didn't have separation, it just looked like crap. And then when we did have separation, Drew was either confused the majority of the time. He did he did make a couple of the throws, but the majority of the time he was confused and wasn't throwing it to the right guy who was creating the separation based upon the coverage they were given, or he just flat out missed it. And when you have that combination and then you go 0 for 15 on third down and your first first down on third down is with 42 seconds left in the game, you're not going to win many football games playing like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, and the fact that it was still a a game within our reach, going 0 for 15, man, I mean, it's there's no moral victories, but God. That's vicious. Just off of the fact that, like – just imagine how many drives you could sustain. Just yeah. even on the third and short, third, third manageables, the third and longs. We can you can count those as a wash if you want to, because you know it's always a, a toss up regardless. But the things like that where we got the ball around midfield, where we got to at least like move the chains one more time, or you know what I'm saying get into the fringe red zone, high red zone area, just you know so we can start taking shots or at least get some more one on one matchups with the dudes on the outside because. Like, when you saw, when you would see Ohio State, again, they weren't, like, launching the ball all up and down the field on us. When they were able to sustain drives and things like that, like B was saying, they was going to Marvin Harrison Jr. And they was going to Stover. And Marvin Harrison Jr., again, he still had to make tough catches. Like, it's not even like he was out there creating all the kind of the greatest separation in the world all game. You know, our DBs were sticking on him for a good amount of the game. So, on the flip side for Penn State, if Drew ain't on target or if Drew might have missed it a little bit here, a little bit high, a little bit low, a little bit, things of that sort, they still need somebody to be in the racer, need somebody to go out there and make that play, need somebody to at least uh, carry the spark or bring a different spark. That's that's even on, a, on an all-season basis to where, like, I haven't necessarily seen, obviously because Penn State's been such a great team overall or the better team than a lot of the guys that they're playing that'll overcome. But, like, Again, not, not every game is going to end up being, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, David and Goliath, and not every game is going to be like a, a highly favored one side of the ball or somebody, you know what I'm saying, um, is being a favorite to win regardless. I think it's more so like those little plays, those little, that extra, you know what I'm saying, X factor. Yeah, those three or four plays that that keep you on the field, that, you know, it just changes the whole mindset of the game, changes the whole flow of the game. You don't even have to score off of it, things like that. Now, let me ask you this. Like, B, you were talking about rhythm before we got on here and went live and, like, getting Drew in rhythm. <clears throat> and then Deshaun, we, we, we talked about how we haven't seen the separation. We haven't seen the receivers be put in a situation where they have to go win 50-50 balls two or three times during a game and, and make some impactful plays. One thing that has been kind of a staple of of Coach Franklin's offense since he's got to Penn State has been the perimeter screen game. And the reason I bring this up is for, for two points. I think, A, when you're struggling to create separation as a receiver, this is more for you, Hammy, how much does just catching a little bubble with some bodies out in front of you or catching a little key screen with some bodies out in front of you and being able to go and, and wiggle around and if you split one, great. If you don't, you know, you still make an efficient play. How much how much is that like a good efficient builder? And then B, maybe from a from a quarterback standpoint, I'm going <laughs> to make you play the other side of the ball here. <laughs> like from a rhythm standpoint, do you think that mixing that in maybe – especially early in the game and stuff like that in some really good situations would have been advantageous for Penn State. And I just thought it was weird because I thought it was always a staple of yeah. even offense. You know, we did it against Delaware. We did it against other guys. And it wasn't like they were pressing us. They weren't pressing us yeah. the majority of the time. I mean, they, yeah. they were giving us a little cushion. I think there was ways to kind of get a little motion yeah. in there and create a little more separation and get some leverage, however it may be. Um, but I just didn't see the creativity top to bottom. And I think those are, that's a great outlet for the quarterback when they're struggling and the receivers. Yeah, and um, even more so at a point, get get some guys just their hands on the ball early in the game. Get Drew, get some completions in his eyes. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like seeing a shooter making a free throw, just seeing the ball go on the net kind of thing. Like, 
those type of things are definitely advantageous for offenses for again sustaining drives and then to go even further like you said the perimeter screen game if y'all ain't gonna run the ball as much with Singleton and with Allen get them on a little halfback screen you know what I'm saying let them do the yakking just through the pass game again you just add another element rather than um, again drop back passing running a draw slants goes just yeah. staying over the middle of crossers and things like that to where you just hoping that um, like that area of the field is open instead of letting dudes make things get open or letting dudes find the opening on their own kind of thing. So, um, yeah, those like those things are huge. Like, back, especially like you said with Coach Franklin's offenses, like just uh, six yards, five yards, extension of the run game. That's like just yeah. like a long, long handoff, like y'all would say. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and then. That's also stretching the defense, <clears throat> stretching them laterally, stretching them to the point where like they got to run. And then they're going to maybe uh, set up their alignment a little wider because they just got hit on the perimeter for a screen. And that's when you run it up the middle, things like that. So, no, nah, you're you're absolutely right. You hit the nail on the head with the, the at least the creativity or like the throwing counter punches or the – this didn't work, but I want this to work. So let me try and get something going to where like I can get back to this later kind of thing, at least from yeah. the play calling standpoint and from the playmaking standpoint too. So yeah. don't ever forget it's two pole, two folded. Yeah, I would say, you know, credit to the defense. Played a hell of a game, hell of a game. And just speaking to the point on the cross, you know, the uh, the shallow crosses and passing it off, I mean, that's high-level defense. And for what it looked like, they were communicating in it. And, you know, they figured it out in the second half. But that's where the execution comes in again. You know, the big touchdown Marvin Harrison finally had, you can see him talking it out. You know, shallow under, one's coming underneath, I'm over top of that. But then they run into each other, and, you know, maybe that was schemed up by Ohio State, I'm not sure. But it just comes down to the execution. And credit, once again, kudos to them seeing that and taking advantage of their best player, one of the best players against, you know, an advantageous position against a linebacker. It's an advantageous matchup. Yeah. I mean, I know Ham's licking his chops whenever they got a linebacker trying to guard yeah. him. Yeah. 100%. I think it's more so, too, that, like, um, like you said, they're trying to pass it off. They're trying to do the communication the right way. But it's just, like, I don't know. Somebody has to see it coming, or they you just have to understand tendencies, like tendency breakers and things like that. Third, third and short. And then, again, Marvin Harrison was getting all his shit off a of yak, all his yards off a of yak. He wasn't never really, like, going up top. He wasn't making spectacular catches. He had a couple tough grabs throughout the game. But, like I said, dudes had him, like, at least on the wraps for a good amount of the game. Besides, like, that big, I don't know, trick play or whatever. It was, it was the first – well, the first drive, he had the big, like, bench route, the big – Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That he caught that had big explosives. But, like, that was a 30, 25, 30-yard yeah. gain. And then – like he had, he finished with what, 120 yards? Something. Yeah. That was four. And then the touchdown he caught was 20 on the, on the, yeah. on the shallow. The first shallow they ran with him, he had 30 on that. So like you're sitting there and then like four or five plays, he had the vast majority of the yards he had in the game. Mm-hmm. To your point, it was pretty much all yak. Like mm-hmm. he just, was, uh, he RGBs just are sticky for sure. And when he did, yeah, pitch, they were they well. right there. And just going back to the, um, uh, the shallow cross ham, you said it, you know, and you had said a hack about drill. There's, there's anticipation for the quarterback position, but there's really, there's yeah. anticipation in every position. And especially yeah. at linebacker, this may have been one of my greater, you know, attributes. I wasn't necessarily a blazer. It wasn't going to smack you in the mouth per se, but anticipation was my thing as far as, you know, I know I had, there's a cross, I know a cross was coming and I understood this more in the league. I will say, and I know he's way faster than me. So I got to get my little shuffle two-step momentum going east and west before that guy gets to me so I can pick up that speed and kind of get a head start on it. And those little things like that, that linebackers in every position kind of, you kind of got to build on your own. You can't necessarily coach it. You can't necessarily teach it. It's your own film study. Even if it's just a zone drop, get in depth. You know, you know something's coming behind you, but you can't see it. That's anticipation. You saw two go out. So one's probably coming in, whether it's 15 yards, five yards, whatever it may be. Little things like that. That's it's kind of it's what we have to hone in on to eclipse, you know, these 
these guys that were, you know, still falling behind. Yeah. And then I think to kind of hit the base of this pyramid here, I thought there were three moments. If I'm going to zone in, like take away the fact, the execution, all the minutia that we just talked about. Cool. Like hash it up to like players making plays when they needed to and other players not making plays when they didn't need to. But I thought the three biggest moments in this game were the fumble return for a touchdown that we had to get called back on the holding or PI. Yeah. Um, one that some folks have talked about, but I don't think is being talked about enough because of A, the timing of it, and B, um, the vast swing it created from a field position standpoint was second possession Ohio State had coming out of the half now. Think about that. We're down, what, six or, or yeah, 10-3 or something like that yeah. at that point, mm-hmm. 6-10 or something like that. Um, but it's still a one-possession ball game. Mm-hmm. We pin them back on their one-yard line. The punter's got his freaking heels on the back of the end zone. And uh, a guy who had a hell of a week last week is back there returning the punt in day-day. And uh, I kicks him a line drive, and he doesn't field it. It ends up being a 72-yard punt and completely flipping the field, which I know as an offensive player, like, that is so deflating. You're sitting there like, all right, cool. Like, we're about to get this ball at least the minus 45. If he has a good return plus territory, like, we're right in this thing. And from a momentum standpoint, when you're talking about these types of games – momentum plays such a big factor in it and again take all the execution prior to that out the window I mean even in our 2014 game like we were talking about it took Zettel picking off a ball and scoring for the offense to come alive we were down 17 nothing at that point Mm -hmm. so you see those momentum type games and they feed off of one another and that was just one that was more of a deflator in my opinion than anything else and then we have the muff punt late in the third quarter where we get it in in the plus 45 and we don't get any points off it. So there's three point, there's three points in that game where Ohio state left the door wide open for us. We just didn't execute. And that's, that's a tough pill to swallow. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of meat left on that bone from this past weekend, but. Hey, yo. (laughs) 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 Oh, But, but as a team, even, gotta, even on top of that, yeah, even on top of that, make it worse with the third with the third down conversions being uh, one for sixteen, over fifteen for the majority of the game, and then like, I mean, you said, for fifteen, dude. Like, <laughs> like let's keep it a bean. You're in trash yeah. time, yeah, and your bro. first third down completion happens. Let's just be honest. Yeah. Nah, then another thing, another stat I had heard too, because that that like you said. Um, we well, our first offensive touchdown, our first what is it? they said the first we had six total yards of offense in the second half until oh, yeah. that last drive for the first um, touchdown and things like that. Like yeah. that's that's even in itself. So again, not sustaining drives, but then not taking advantage of the muff punt. Can't move the ball when um, Day Day doesn't uh, field the punt, of course. So then they're going to get the ball back with great field position, and then. <clears throat> Um, of course, the the return for a touchdown um, being negated with the penalty that just you know what I'm saying that was those are all three draining moments. But again, like I said, the six total yards of offense in the second half until we score our only touchdown, offensive touchdown at least for the game. That in itself, like what happened, is a real. It's like a, a crazier question, I would say. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of fingers to point, possibly, and. Everything like that, but like, is it said, finger? Is it finger pointing? No, like, well, no, 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 no. Like, I'm saying it, like it's easier for people. I know a lot of fans are going, "Oh, it's Franklin. Oh, it's Yursich. Oh, it's Drew. Oh, it's this person, that person." As a collective, I think we can all agree it's kind of what we spoke on. It's like who in that moment, in those moments, on those third and threes, whatever it is, to sustain the drive. Yeah, I need a player to step up. Who's huh? gonna? Is it gonna be the guard to make that ceiling block, kick out block? The tight end to make that kick out or that catch or to rip across hard enough or the receiver to rip across the face, even if you don't catch it, to get the flag because they're holding mm-hmm. too. I say, I'm mm-hmm. saying all year, Ohio State, Michigan, it's going to come down to these plays. Can you rip mm-hmm. across and run your route hard enough to get a flag or to rip across mm-hmm. and make the catch? You know, mm-hmm. it's 
that's the frustrating part. And those are the plays. Once again, we got to make to 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 get over the top of uh, to beat these teams. So, closing thoughts on this game, Ham. What what do you got, bro? A lot of season uh, left. A lot of season left. A lot of a lot of season. A lot of season. But listen. We needed that one. We needed that one. That one was like again hindsight twenty twenty. Um, but like even we need to control our destiny. Yeah, I I would even say to control our destiny. But I think even just to like get the monkey off the back, though. Like you know what I'm saying? That's the like or um it, being them at the shoe too. Being them at the shoe, getting the monkey off your back is a whole yeah. totally different thing because. You know what I'm saying I don't even remember. I don't know if we. I think the last time that happened was like 2011, 10, somewhere in there. Yeah. Like, so like it's. So I think um I think it was a well still well hard fought game. I don't think again like there's no fingers to point. Nobody can play the blame game because again it's a team and um you know what I'm saying it's really. All the players, I, I look at it from a player standpoint. I don't ever look at it at least like play call or nothing like that because when it comes down to it, it's football too. 11 on 11. Hey, I'm running the slant. Hey, I'm running the slant. Throw it, catch it, first down. Keep the chain, keep the ball rolling and things like there that. There's plays too. to be had too. Mm-hmm. Like that's the thing is like there's plays to be had just exactly. by rolling the ball out on the field. Yeah, I exactly. Think to say. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a bow on this. I think both of you guys make great points, but I'm going to try to do it from a holistic view, right? I think as a fan base, naturally we overreact um, to good and bad. And unfortunately, this was really, really bad on the offensive side of the ball. The bright side in that is, is the defense kept us in the ball game. If you want to count the trash time, touchdown or not, you know, hey, we were in it. The whole time, won the blowout, didn't get smoked, and we played like hot garbage on offense the whole night. So we know what our ceiling, what our what our floor is now, and then as a team, what we're capable of still doing against a top five team. I'm confident in that. Right, moving forward, if I'm going to take a positive away, I'm extremely confident in that. Um, I think that goes back to what we've talked about all year: roster development, talent, and depth. Jimmy's and Joe's still play the ball game. When you're playing against the best teams, that's what matters. And although some of some of those guys in particular let us down, some of those guys also kept us in that ball game for the entirety of the four quarters, right? Um, I, I look for the offense to rebound, um, and they need to quick. Uh, I've I've been preaching patience. Um and part of this might just be the fact that I didn't really have a lot of this during my tenure up there when I first started playing, but like seven games in, like you gotta, you gotta start getting a feel of things as a whole, um, as a play caller, as a quarterback, as a, as a receiver of who you are, what you're going to do, and then be able to build on that. Know what your tendencies are. You already had your bye week You should have already done a deep dive into that time to start getting a little creative and start putting your guys in situations to be successful consistently. And I think we know now that we can't just line up and do it. So there's going to have to be some scheme involved in terms of us doing it that will at least give them a little bit more of an edge. Mm -hmm. And that's what goes back to just the play action game, stuff like that, so on and so forth. Defensively boys, keep that shit up, man. That's uh, we, uh, I think Coach Franklin said it in the, in his presser. You know, two of the best, two of the best teams, and and also, kudos to Ohio State. Yeah, I, I you know I don't think that that's enough as well. I think you know we're sitting here expecting us to light up 600 yards against a really really talented defense. It wasn't going to happen. Um, but I think at least on the other side of the ball, Ohio State offensively did what they needed to do, made the plays when they needed to make it, um, and uh, you know you got to tip your cap, right? Yeah. But uh, moving on. Um, Boy. can't let this affect us. What? Call me corny, but I think Drew's press conference was his Tim Tebow moment. His never Damn, again. Bro. <laughs> Damn, bro. I love it. I love never it. Never again. I believe in this kid, man. To end, to end it with love. End it with love. I'm, dude, I'm his biggest, dude, I'm his biggest fan, man. I want him to do well. I really do. But the, I, you know what? 
Never. Heard it here on the pocket first, dude. Never again. 15 to 15. Let's go. Yeah, next next game. But as you said, um, man, a lot of season left. And we got to I mean, all these games are big. I mean, bigger than ever. And these teams are no slouches neither. I mean, you got to. I mean, crazier stuff has happened too, right? Yeah. Right. So I think we got to get back to executing against the teams that we can go out and now to execute. Yeah. Um, Indiana being one of them yeah. coming up next. I hate it. Then we got Maryland away. And then the game that's going to be make or break for these guys, if nothing cra- else crazy happens uh, for the rest of the year, um, to put yourself in a, in a chance to have a three-way tie and some type of crazy tiebreaker, I think we'd have the advantage if we did beat Michigan and the Michigan went on to beat Ohio State. Right. Um, you know, at home, under well, – no, it's a big noon kickoff, but at home um, – that game just became substantially more important yeah. than it did prior to this week. Yeah. And there's no secret about it. I know they're not allowed. The players aren't allowed to look ahead, but we are. There's no secret about it. We are, you know, talking Big Ten champs. You know, we talk to talk now, and that's where we got it. That's where we got to take it. And I think, you know, I know we, as former players, have the right to kind of put more pressure and talk about these guys because we've been in these games. We've lost the big ones. We've won the big ones. We've lost the teams we shouldn't have lost to. When we've beaten teams, we weren't had no right in beating. So I kind of I feel like that gives us the, you know the the right to speak on it in a certain manner. You know we don't expect too much, but we expect you know we expect greatness. You know the guys are putting in work, and you expect to go out there and you know get the fruits of your labor. So a lot of season left. I'm still expecting what what, what was my number? Ninety percent of playoff chance in the beginning of the yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big number. Big number, big number. Hey, I'm I'm sticking with it. Don't look at me like that. You know, crazy yeah. say crazy things have happened. Um and that's kind of this recap. You know, team is still in a good spot. <laughs> we laughing at him, we'll face this email. Bro. bro, I'll let you guys know this was my roommate for dang near four or three years. I know this guy, probably the first or second recruit. To you and AB, I talked to in our class. Another Virginia guy. You got yeah. Ham rode home with me every time we went home, bro. Every time, bro. Oh, yes, yeah. sir. Up the canes, hit the road. Got the canes, yeah. hit the road again. You know, hit it's a canes uh, downtown yeah. State College. I know. Bro. Yeah. yeah, yeah, bro. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. See how we should yeah. have been talking about that. Food should have been us, bro. Should have yeah. been us. You know, I always talk about having a fried chicken spot in downtown. I used to tweet that faithfully. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that was – I thought that was really good. And I think we highlighted the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, let's move on to the mailbag, boys. Mailbag let's, let's get to some mailbag questions. We had some good ones. Um, I think I'm going to start <laughs> – oh, yeah. We kind of talked about it. Uh, I'm going to start with an easier one, lay up, maybe some more direct advice here. Okay. Um, from at Amy Nemeth, what advice would you give Drew Aller? You want to start off with that, QB? You want me to start off with that? I'm asking. I gotta no, let, let him go last. Let him go last. Let him go last. Hey, what the hell? If, Drew, if, Drew, if Drew tunes in, he's going to know that like, I bet this – the the ending arguments is what I should listen to. But nah, my advice. See, I don't know nothing about playing quarterback though, so I can't. <laughs> Neither of us do. <laughs> ain't gonna tell them what to do. But my advice is, um, well, maybe maybe let me let me let me frame this, Ham. As a receiver, and then as a as a leader on the defense, what would be your advice to fifteen if you were in that locker room after that game? I would say as the stretch of the season, the end of the last little home stretch of the season, you need to find you your guy. To find that guy. Y'all need to, you know what I'm saying, be like telepathic for moments like that in the games and where you need to play where coaches can rely on you, things like that. Start if he hasn't at least had an idea who that could be, he should have an idea by now or, or definitely by the time they play Michigan or any other time that they need some crunch time plays and things like that. So I, that would be my one one real um, piece of advice for him is get your get-out-of-jail-free guy. 
I like that. I like that. Yeah, definitely gonna need that. Um, my one piece of advice, shoot, man, I'm gonna take a page out of uh, the bear, the show, the bear, and just let it rip, kid. Let it rip. Don't care. I mean, I know he probably doesn't care. If he does, hopefully. He tries not to, but don't care. Anyone says, let it rip. Whether it's deep ball. Hey, nah. We gotta talk about the um. We gotta talk about the speaking Japanese dude. Or right, remember when um Coach Franklin said in the press conference, he said, "You all didn't see the video where he was like, uh, is there ever a coaching point where you get the guy or the quarterbacks just drop back and just oh, chuck it deep for a guy to make plays?" <laughs> and then Coach Franklin was like, "You're you're speaking Japanese." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying deep balls in particular. I'm just saying uh, 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 <laughs> let it rip as far as whatever you know. Be confident in everything you do, whether it's a check down, mid middle ball, whatever. Let it rip because we know he has the arm talent. You know, don't second guess anything. Let it rip. And once again, I'm not a quarterback, so take that advice with a grain of salt. Do they do they be throwing the ball deep? That that the reason coach got that in a press conference because the explosive plays in the past game have not been what they've been in the past. Mm, okay. uh, so a lot of people are like, "Oh, why don't you throw deep?" And the, uh, yeah, the Franklin. Ah. <laughs> I just watched that kid in shambles, and like I said, I prefaced my my beginning comments with, "I've been in his shoes. I've been on top of the mountain as well." Um. He's got to do what he's got to do to get out of it. Mentals. Like, I know how much that game meant to him. He was back home. Um, You could see it in his face. Obviously ripped up, uh, taking questions from the reporters. Um, But uh, he needs to have a short memory. I know it's cliche. He needs to get back back to focus. I think, Ham, you made a great point. Uh, I think he needs to make a point to find a guy. Whoever it may be, if they're not going to step up, he's got to figure out who it's going to be and grab them. Take them in the film room like you and me used to do. Talk about things. How are you going to win against this leverage? What's your thought process on this concept? So on and so forth. Um, and something I told him at the beginning of the year was just tune out the noise and get lost in the process and stay dumb. Um, you know, it's really hard with these types of games and the adversity that comes with it, and then the noise, the outside noise that comes with it to do that, Um, especially when you're the one that gets shoved in front of the microphone every week. But um, he he, he truly does have to do that. And, uh, you know, I I like to think that that the staff is going to do a good job of trying to put him in better situations and make it easier for him. Um, But he's also got to focus and, 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 and look at it and get better from it. Right. Like there's got to be some internal reflection going on. Like, how can I start seeing the middle of the field better? How can I start anticipating guys winning better, whether it's reading body language, stuff like that? But um, I think he realized he has to play with a different pace and a different a different amount of anticipation um, than he did on Saturday to beat the big dogs. Uh, So, Hammy, you talked about that. Great points. Um, But ultimately, kid, you know, shake it off. Get back to the work, um, man. Like get back to your boys in the locker room. Those are the guys that matter. And uh, it is back to work. You got a great rebound opportunity, man. You got an Indiana team. I don't even know what the hell Indiana's done all year, to be completely honest mm-hmm. with you. I was listening. So, no, 50, great, you feel good again. <laughs> yeah, great chance to get up on it and, and go do your thing. So, um, what else you got? All right, that was an easy one. That was an easy one. Give me something. Hit me. <laughs> you want one, B? No, I'm saying, give me something. To, let's not go easy. Let's. Oh man, curveball. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. I don't know if I want to go to the big dog yet. All but right, we'll right. we'll get to that one. We will get to that one. Um, let's go to uh, my guy John Carter, Papa underscore John eight one four. Big Papa. Yeah, Papa John. <laughs> Papa John. John. Um, Bebel. As a defensive player in a game like this with the deep played lights out, how do you feel about the offense flopping? Um, and then Hammy, I'll piggyback off this, but I'll act like John directed this at you and that he knew that you were our guest because B-Bell told him during his Mailbag Monday video. Uh-huh. Do you lose faith in the staff, head coach or offense for the scheme? Do you put this more on Aller or uh, Mike Yersich? 
Uh, how, as the QB, can you improve effectiveness with wide receivers? We touched on that. So let's focus on the first two of those. So, B, I'll let you rip first, and then, uh, Hammy, you'll touch on that. I'll read it again, Hammy, if you need me to, because I got short time. I lost two. <laughs> um, I'll start off with, I mean, when you're a part of a team, and if you're a true team player, you're never even thinking the way this question is posed. But I definitely I've been in games where the defense is balling and the offense is struggling a little bit. And to me, it gets it puts more of an onus on me to make a play, to be honest. I kind of, Not that I look forward to being in those games, but as we said, those moments, when those moments come and the offense is struggling, we need a play to get off the field or a turnover, that's kind of when I come alive a tad bit. And I kind of try to feed that into the surrounding players on the team, whether it's, you know, anyone like, yo, this is it. You know, it's it's a tight game right now. We're on the field a lot. We got to make something happen to get off the field and spark this team. As you said, it may be a Zettel pick six. You know, we had full of team full of guys that were ready to make those plays, and I think that's where the the difference has to come. You know, I know we talk a lot about team ball. Everyone's been good. The numbers are good, but all that doesn't mean nothing unless you step up in a big moment. I like it. Ham, do you need me to read it again, bro? Um, you said something about... Yeah. I got you. I don't even go down the path. I got yeah. you. <laughs> Do you lose faith in the staff, head coach, or offensive coordinator um, for the scheme, or do you put this more on Drew or Mike Yersich? Hmm. Maybe. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Yo. The um, relief. I I think I'd say if he's asking from a fan's perspective, I'd say I'm losing faith in the the at least approach or the strategy, or I'm losing faith in the in the I guess preparation. Um because uh, I mean, it's been like kind of the same old story. I know like nobody really wants to dwell on the past, but you know what I'm saying? But um, something has to change. I'd, yeah, I'd say it's more so like, I'd say it's more so like we, again, like we needed this game. I, I at least wanted to see something a little like get shaken up a little bit, like whether that's like, you know what I'm saying, we, we get them on the rocks or, or backs against the wall on the ropes. Stuff. But anyways, um, I think it's more so like, again, um, I'm not blame. I wouldn't blame Drew. Like, that's his first test, like, at, at the shoe. I'm saying that we know what the expectations are to be like and things like that, but... Um, again, it's it's about what's around him. It's about what's what positions they're putting him in for him to, you know, what I'm saying showcase what it is that he can do to lead them over an Ohio State team. So I think it's it's really uh, a top down uh, trickle effect, if if anything, for for games like these, of course, because um, again, it it's not even a matter of of talent no more, or talent margin being so. So why now is again just the uh, like all uh, right, why is Ohio State number one, number two every year? And why are we I'm saying just right there? Or why didn't we make that shit happen this year, kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So the amount think, of draft picks, so on and so yeah, forth. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Yeah, I think I think you made I think you hit the nail on the head. I think it's a combination of both, right? Because you can't excuse again, you go back and you watch the third down tape, 0 for 15. It wasn't like there were guys that weren't open 15 times. There were. It wasn't like he was getting hit on all of them. He wasn't. So I think it's a collective drop ball thing. Uh, Yeah, I just think it was I think it's a collective thing, like from an execution (laughs) standpoint in this particular instance. The execution was poor top down. Uh, as an offense when the plays were there to be had. But I think that that poor execution was magnified due to the lack of creativity and uh, getting away from possibly from a schematic standpoint, doing some things that play off of what you've done all year to provide your guys 
a better chance, put them in a better position rather than just leaving them out on an island and saying like, Drew, like, I know you haven't done this all year really consistently, but you got to really understand when they're in man coverage and you got to cross a route with Theo Johnson running on a linebacker or a safety. And he kind of gives them a little wing at the top. He's going to have separation. That ball needs to be out before he's out of his break. Like those types of things that he hasn't done all year, like just making him do that in the biggest game of this kid's life, like the staff didn't really help him. So to Hammy's point, I think it's a holistic thing, right? Where like as a, as a program, like the excuses are now null and void. Like they're gone. Like we're so far past what happened in 2012. Um, these three guys played a role in getting this off, getting us to that point, And we're very proud of it. And I think for, for, for us, I'm speaking for us and you guys mm-hmm. can correct me if I'm wrong. Like that switch needs to happen now where it's like, that's no longer a crutch. We're just going to do what we got to do and focus on what we got to focus on mm-hmm. to, be able to get us over that hump. Right. So I think it's a whole, it's a collective thing and the players need to realize that we're out of this now. Like you guys got to make plays when the plays are there and then we got to do a better job of putting you in positions to be successful and helping you guys in that, in that time. And that's what I saw. I saw an Ohio state team that did that, that saw things, took advantage of it. I saw a Penn state team that kind of kept, trying to just do what they were doing, even though it wasn't really working. And then like their mix up was throw Keandre a ball behind the line of scrimmage for him to throw a freaking pass. Like you probably got some better stuff there. And uh, that's where I will challenge Mike because I think he does. I got a lot of respect for him. Um, And I I think they'll get better. I don't think this will happen again. So uh, now let's go to the big dog. This one. This one was a big one, man. Um, this is from Slime. Slime. At Slime underscore Trey underscore Ball. Uh, at what point do we have a serious conversation about James Franklin's record in big games and whether or not he's the guy to take us where we want to go? 1-9 versus Ohio State. 3-16 and 16 versus top 10 teams. 1-13 and 13 versus Ohio State and Michigan when they're ranked in the top 10. Yeah, it's definitely a tough pill to swallow. Uh, You know, those numbers, those numbers sound like one in 16 on third down. You know, it's, it's not something you like to hear as a Penn state fan, as a player on a lot of those games that we lost. It's definitely tough to hear. And I think we definitely have to acknowledge it because it's the fact, but it all, I know it falls similar to what you said about uh, Drew as a QB. I know it falls on Franklin, but it also falls on us in the past and the, in the, in the, or well, in the present now, the guys playing now, it's, there needs to be more of a strain. I think, you know, Josh Perry hit it on the head. Joshua Perry, uh, former Ohio state linebacker came on last week. He kind of mentioned the preparation going into these weeks, how much pressure these guys feel, And I think that's kind of the turn we have to take. You know, you watch the Florida documentary with with Urban and like the mindset those guys had, like you talking about like killer be killed every week. That's kind of how they felt. And I think that's that's where it has to. (laughs) You know, the intensity has to be taken up a notch. And it starts with Franklin. I mean, obviously, he's uh, the leader of it all. I think that's the change I would like to see. I'm not confident and people always want to fire, get somebody fired for what? Then then who? Then what? What's after that? You know, like you said, we overreact to everything. Kid plays bad. Oh, we should have played ball. We should have played this. Okay. And then what? What do you expect that kid to do? What do you expect? Who do you expect to hire? You know, what's that coach going to do? Is it another restart? Because God forbid we have that. You know what I mean? So... It's definitely uh, to be spoken about, but I put, I put the pressure on the players, kind of what Ham said earlier. Ham? Um, yeah, I, I I say I'd probably agree with B-Bell. I, I wouldn't – I don't ever see it as, like – it's hard. It's hard because when you do it if from that standpoint, I guess – I know you can't really compare the NFL to college, though, but – I'm saying like it's just, I, mean, I don't mean to cut you off, but let's be fair. 
Coach Franklin was dealing with, we talked about it, a, a, I wouldn't even say a talent gap, but let's just say a depth and talent gap, depth affecting the talent the majority of the time there. And realistically speaking, Ohio State was kicking the shit out of everybody from like 2012 to 2011, 12 till <laughs> Michigan beat them. Like mm-hmm. they were kicking the shit out of everybody in the Big right. Ten. Yeah. But then again, when you look at it holistically, there's, you know, the USC game, there's the – in the Rose Bowl, there's uh, Michigan when they finally started turning things around. That's become a, a sore on our ass. So, like, um, <laughs> I think the talent gap is now kind of – we could say if it's this year, maybe last year, bridged, right? So, realistically speaking, I think that there's some skewed data in there, if, yeah. I, if I'm being fair. But go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you no, that's that played into what I was gonna say. I don't wanna compare the NFL to college, but um it's really like in college sometimes you can't control what dudes you get to come to your school, can't control you can't really control um like grabbing a a lottery I'm not even a lottery pick, a top ten Challenge. draft pick every every single time, even though it seems like Ohio State will always turn dudes like that out. I'm saying like it's just the history of the school rather than our most recent history. Like you had just said, he had a big, at least um, from James, I'm saying, but he, but he had a big, at least, uh, he had a big uphill battle that he had to overcome. Obviously, he didn't, he inherited it because it started with Coach OB, but um, like just realistically, that record or those numbers, those stats going to be a little bit skewed. But then at the same time, how long are you going to say that for, you know, or how, like, how many more, like, I guess that's what that fan is asking. It's big slime. I guess that's what big slime <laughs> is asking. Um, he's basically trying to see like, when are we going, I guess, you know what I'm saying? Put the magnifying glass on coach Franklin. When I think the magnifying glass has been on him the whole time. It's just now more so um, like, <clears throat> I don't know, bro. Like, you get, you, I guess people get sick and tired of like repeat offenders and shit like that, or just like, why haven't you done anything different? Or what's that saying? The the definition the, of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now, now people thinking Penn State's driving all these fans crazy because we just doing the same shit year in and year out kind of thing. But um, nah, I, I don't. I wouldn't even put a lot of, or at least I don't like tend to look at at least the the top ten ranked teams stuff like that because it's the same two teams. Like it's not even it's not even like it's it's like yeah. he's losing to anybody that like if it's uh, Minnesota and they have a bomb year they go in top ten and we gonna lose against them or something like that. We always gonna put up a fight or we always gonna beat somebody. It's just those same two teams the majority of the time that um Sometimes one year it goes one way and then the other year it don't. Like what was Wisconsin ranked when we played them in the in the Big Ten ship, B? Like they was what, like six, like five, something like that. So it's not even a matter of like top ten ranked teams, top ten ranked opponents. It's just those two opponents that are gonna get these first round picks. They're gonna get these, yeah, they're gonna get these all world dudes just uh just off the strength. So like what I think that's that's where the magnifying glass need to go. Not on the maybe not even on the coaching or on the field stuff. Why why am Marvin Harrison Jr. ain't go to or think about going to uh, uh, Penn State? Why yeah, Philly kid? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Why um why I don't even know who's been recently. Why CJ Stroud ain't think about dropping dimes um at Penn State Different University take. and shit like that, you know? So you're saying that so, magnifying glasses. We talk about the talent, but to get one transfer port transfer portal. To get one of those guys, you're saying those guys. Yeah, that's. I think that's the only thing. I think that's really the only thing that's missing. Like, granted, like that's not always the case for college football in the majority of the case, but like, you gotta have somebody that's. I'm not saying there ain't nobody on Penn State's team that's feared, but you know what I'm saying. You gotta have somebody that's gonna put that. You know what I'm saying? Like the the. He walk. He's the one holding the flag for the captains, and they're like, "Damn, we gotta play him today." Type shit. Like you know two Like yeah. two Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, oh, and then, yeah. 
And don't even got to be to that caliber, bro, because the dudes that came after 2-6, across the nation, though, dudes that came after 2-6 across the nation that are very good players and shit like that, like, they making it happen. You know what I'm saying? And we haven't had really anything like that since. Very good players that have came through, but nothing like that since. Yeah. I think it's tough, right? Like, I think, again, I, I mentioned, I think some of the data might be skewed. I think he's finally closed the gap. Um and I think this point's obviously going to come up after this game. But like I said, I thought our offense played so bad. Um, our defense played so well. I think that somewhere in the middle puts us in a really good position, right? And I think you're not going to consistently expect our offense to go out and go 0 for 15 on third down. That's not – that's a, that's an outlier in the statistical category. Unfortunately, that happened – against Ohio state in the horseshoe at the biggest time, right? Like maybe it goes back to some of the stuff you were talking about B about how Josh, you know, with urban, like they, they put a focus on it. He got him, you know, maybe not so much onus on the game, right. And the one and O mentality, like realizing that this is a big game and the magnitude of what this game can mean for your future for that season and yeah. so on and so forth. Maybe there is some, some, I mean, Ham always said it pressure make diamonds. Yeah. Maybe there is some onus to like, admitting that right and like you know like Mich- like Ohio State has the Michigan countdown in their locker room all yeah. all year long like maybe there is some onus to those types of mentalities right but I think you know we got to let this year play out I, I November 11th is going to be the one for me right like I think how they play next week is going to be a, a really good ticker as to how the overall team took this loss and then you got a good team in Maryland that could be dangerous. If we get through those two, cool. Like, it's got to be a completely different approach. It's got to be a completely different team that runs out on that field on November 11th, in my eyes, from a mentality standpoint. Yeah. And I think that's where Coach Franklin can take advantage of it. And if I'm going to say a learning experience for him at all, that's something that I think his next step in his evolution is – and I, I think he's done a good job of growing throughout throughout his tenure here and a lot of other areas. So I look forward to him taking advantage of that opportunity. Yeah, same with the players, man. The guys, the leaders on that team, kicking it up a notch. Well, whatever way, however way you got to do it, yeah, turn it up a notch. Yeah, you ask them to turn it up, do the same, yeah. right? Like. I know as a player, I was expected coaches that didn't ask me to do stuff that they wouldn't do themselves mm-hmm. or that they weren't, you know, expecting mm-hmm. of themselves. So, you know, I, I, I look forward to that opportunity and that growth. But need to be like saving and take them GTs and take the uh, Camaros and, and shit like that to so get a dub one of them years. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get the GTs. Yeah. You got to win a couple of natties to get those. Though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're still on the plugins. We don't even got gas in them. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. We get the scooters. Yeah. Scooters. <laughs> Birds. Um, damn. Five. It was awesome, dude. It's good yeah, seeing bro. you. Appreciate y'all having me. Great seeing y'all. Yeah, I yeah. love what y'all doing with the show. Again, I told you how to show out on the streets. Mm-hmm. Hiding than Joe Button, all of them right now. That's what I heard. Hey, you're right. But this was another episode of the pocket. Um, don't forget to follow us on all our socials or all our socials at pit at state media PSU. You can follow B bell at underscore underscore B bell. <laughs> you can follow Deshaun Hamilton at, at Hammy Pacquiao, Hammy please. Pacquiao. Yeah. yeah. Follow the boy. That hasn't changed. Damn. Yeah, hasn't. <laughs> you, you are the type of dude to not switch it up, but damn, yeah, dude. Yeah. Regardless, I've been there for a minute. Yeah. I've been there for a minute too. At C Hackenberg one, um, but yeah, man, uh, make sure you're following us. We got merch, the pocket. Um, you can hit that up, find it on Mercury's uh, website. But uh, we appreciate it as always. And this was another episode of the of the pocket. Moving on from Ohio State, wipe it out. Looking forward to Indiana. Here we go.